Hi there YouTube friends, Carlos Arisate and welcome back to Mom's Greek Kitchen, the channel where I teach you my mom's Greek recipes in her memory. Today we're making ekmek. Ekmek. It's actually not a Greek recipe, it's a Turkish recipe, but uh, it came into Mom's repertoire when uh, one of her dear friends uh, used to make it and Mom fell in love with it. So she adopted it and actually ended up, it was me making it. Uh, so we're going to make ekmek today. It, uh, from what I understand, ekmek means bread in Turkish and uh, there are versions of this where the bottom layer is actually toasted dried bread uh, and then has a syrup poured over it. Um, this version has a, a cake layer uh, and there's also another version that I've seen which uses uh, kataifi which is like a very fine shredded filo uh, that is toasted in the oven and then uh, the, the recipe is completed the same way. Uh, it's a very nice uh, dessert. It's light, it's creamy, it's uh, refreshing, uh, sweet of course, has a great flavor, uh, and it's a family favorite. So uh, come with me into the kitchen and we'll get started. All right, welcome back. So we're going to get started on our ekmek. And our first step is to make the cake uh, base. Um, so I'm going to start with uh, three quarter cups of sugar. And I'm going to add to that four whole large eggs. And I am going to use my mixer and I'm going to uh, cream those. So we're going to go until our eggs are uh, pale yellow uh, and when you make a figure eight on top with the batter it sort of stays on top for a few seconds. Alright, and so uh, it'll be a little noisy for a minute and then I'll be back. Alright, so there's our uh, eggs and sugar mixture. Um, it's nice and creamy, it's very pale. If you uh, drizzle the batter on top, you can see it sit on top for a few seconds before it disappears. All right, that's what we want. We're now going to add uh, three quarters of a cup of a neutral oil. Uh, I'm using, I think it's uh, safflower, but canola, corn, any of those kind of oils. And we're going to drizzle it in while we're beating. Basically, we're making an emulsion or uh, a sweet, in this case, mayonnaise. Um, so I'm just going to add the oil. See now it's quite a bit thicker. Okay, now we're going to add our flour. So I've got three quarters of a cup of flour and a teaspoon of baking powder, which I'm just going to add and just give it a quick mix. You don't need to sift or anything like that. And mix it in a little bit so you don't get like a cloud of flour. And at the same time, I'm going to add a teaspoon of vanilla. Oh, and I forgot. Just a pinch of salt. Make sure all the flour is in the batter. And give it 
one more quick beat. And our kick batter is done. So here I have a 9 by 13 uh, baking pan. I've uh, sprayed it lightly with uh, cooking spray. Uh, not that you really need to because you're going to put a syrup over the cake after, which will release it from the pan no matter what. But just for uh, habit, <laughs> uh, I always spray or coat with uh, butter or something. My oven is preheated to 375 degrees. My uh, rack is in about the middle, middle or uh, middle low position. And I think this takes about uh, 35 minutes, but I will tell you precisely after I bake it. You want it to be um, nicely golden on top and set when you test it with a, um, a skewer or tester. All right, uh, beat out the bubbles and uh, this is ready to go into the oven. So I will be back when it's ready for the next step. All right, see you soon. All right, while our uh, base for our ekmek, the cake, is in the oven, uh, we're going to make our syrup that gets poured over top the cake layer. Um, in my pot here, I have one and a half cups of water and one and a half cups of sugar, which is a uh, true simple syrup. Equal parts of uh, sugar and water is a simple syrup. Um, and we're going to bring this to the boil and we're going to uh, give it a quick stir. Make sure that the sugar is dissolved before it comes to the boil. All right, our sugar has dissolved now. So we're just gonna bring this to a boil. All right, our syrup's been boiling for a minute or two. It's a little thicker than it was. You don't want it too thick. Um, this is supposed to be a, a refreshing layer on the cake uh, or on the dessert. Um, two, three minutes max, I would say. Uh, we're now gonna turn it off. And we're going to add a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Oops, a little extra. <laughs> we always add extra vanilla. All right, so I'm gonna get this out of the way here. And here is our cake base for our ekmek. Now, uh, it took exactly 25 minutes in my 375 degree oven. I use an external thermometer, so I uh, know that I'm pretty much right on 375, but your oven may vary, so please be uh, watchful. Um, it's, um, when it first comes out, it's nice and um, uh, domed a little bit, but of course, as it cools, it falls a little bit. Um, it springs back when you touch it um, straight out of the oven or test it with a, a skewer and uh, you want it uh, dry. Now, the uh, rule of thumb is when you're using syrup and uh, a pastry together, um, one has to be cold and one has to be hot. So I took my, um, because I'm doing this for video, I took this out and let this cool uh, and my syrup as you just saw, is hot. So I'll be doing it that way. Usually we make the syrup first and pour it onto the hot dessert. That's the way mom always did it, but it doesn't matter as long as one is hot and one is cold. So I'm gonna stir my vanilla in. 
and I'm basically just gonna pour this on top and it will look like there's way too much but the cake will absorb it the original recipe called for one cup of sugar and one cup of water I like my ekmek a little moister so you may uh, wanna if you don't really like syrupy type uh, desserts uh, go back to one cup and one cup all right we're ready for our next step of our ekmek we're going to make our ekmek custard now the recipe that I used to use the one the original one I got used a uh, brand name vanilla custard powder not birds uh, a Greek one called Yotis and it's a very good um, uh, makes a very good uh, custard for this uh, dessert the only problem is is it's very hard to find sometimes so I'm going to be showing you my uh, version of that custard powder um, and I think I'm pretty close so we're going to start first of all with uh, six tablespoons of cornstarch stuck to the bowl and cornstarch has is notorious for uh, lumping up so this is a cup of sugar which I am now gonna whisk together a little bit and here is uh, half a cup of milk whole milk um, you can use 2% but whole milk is better for this um, this is uh, half a cup of the total which is four and a half cups um, you need a little bit of milk at the beginning to dissolve the cornstarch and the sugar before you add the milk so you don't so you prevent any lumps And now we can add the rest of our milk, four cups. And now we're going to turn the heat on. And we're going to bring this to a boil until our custard is nice and thick. And then we're going to stir in two envelopes of vanillin sugar. Now vanillin sugar is not quite the same as vanilla sugar. Um, it's uh, an artificial flavor, but it actually has a more pronounced vanilla flavor than actual vanilla and it won't darken the sauce uh, or the custard. Because if you use regular vanilla, it's got a dark color to it unless you can find the uh, clear vanilla that they use for icings and stuff but again that's an artificial vanilla as well so we're going to add two of these you can add um, vanilla sugar it's a slightly different flavor and I'm trying to recreate what is in the um, in the Yotis custard powder which I think is vanillin it has a very different flavor and it goes really well with this dessert but if you can't find it substitute regular vanilla and I would say probably uh, probably two teaspoons at least you want a very pronounced vanilla flavor and I'm also going to add a couple of drops of yellow food coloring just to tint it slightly so it's not white white sauce or custard is uh, starting to thicken up um, I forgot to add a pinch of salt earlier so I'm going to do it now and I'm going to add in my vanillin and 
and continue stirring until it actually comes to the boil because this is a cornstarch base and as soon as the cornstarch comes to a boil it's as thick as it's going to get. And we're basically right there. Yep, okay, taking it off the heat. Move our friend here. So, there is our finished cake, and as you can see, it did absorb all the juice, the syrup that we had in it. So now we're going to pour our custard over top. Just carefully pour. Use a spatula, get all of it out. Give it a little shake to uh, even out. So now I'm going to uh, let this cool a little bit until the uh, skin forms on top. Then I'm gonna put a piece of saran wrap over top and it's gonna go into the fridge until it cools down completely. Then we'll come back and do the next step. All right, see you then. Alright, uh, our next step for our ekmek is to uh, toast some almonds. So I've just uh, got about a half a cup, I would say, of sliced almonds. And I put them on a frying pan on uh, medium high heat. And we're just going to stir and toss until they get a nice golden color. We don't want anything burnt, of course. Uh, I should have uh, put these through a strainer first because they've got some uh, very fine particles in the bottom. I didn't realize those may burn. But I'm not going to go too dark anyway, so we'll be fine, I think. Right, our almonds are starting to take some color. They smell awesome. Love toasted almonds. All right, I'm gonna stop there because the little ones will burn. Uh, but if they were just uh, the larger slices, I would go a little further. So now just put them on a cold plate so they don't uh, burn anymore, don't cook anymore. Turn you off. And uh, when they cool down, we'll put them through a food processor um, so they're a little finer than they are right now. All right, I'll be back with our next step. All right, the next step for our ekmek is to beat up our whipped cream. So I've got uh, two cups of whipping cream in my bowl here. And I'm just going to whip it until it's uh, nice and frothy. And now that it's uh, nice and frothy, I'm going to add in three heaping uh, tablespoons of icing sugar. Uh, I actually use a my uh, like a soup spoon and just slightly heaping. Um, I didn't actually measure measure but uh, I know that this amount is perfect for two cups of uh, whipping cream. So they're a little too soft, so keep going. Alright, 
that's what we want. A nice uh, stiff peak. All right. All right, good. And I'll be right back with the next step. All right, and there's our ECMEC so far. Just came out of the fridge. Take off our plastic wrap. And that can get tossed away. And now we're going to take our freshly whipped whipped cream. And we start putting it on top of our ECMEC. If the uh, whipped cream touches the, uh, the pan, it sticks and you can continue going with the next uh, dollop of whipped cream and that way you get a nice coverage all the way around. So just ease it in until it touches the pan and then you can smooth the rest of it after we do this part. That way you get perfect coverage. Okay, just drop some more on. So that's all two cups of the whipped cream. And now we just make it look nice on top. Even it out. You can do whatever you want for design. If you want a design, most of it will be hidden anyway. I just want it smooth and level basically. Good enough. So here is uh, here are the almonds that I toasted and I put them through my little uh, grinder here. And we're basically going to do a nice coating of the almonds. Try to be neat. Now when I uh, normally make it, if uh, it's for the whole entire family, my brother-in-law doesn't like nuts, so I would put a piece of uh, plastic wrap here, let's say, um, so that keeps uh, the nuts off of that uh, corner, so he doesn't have to scrape off the nuts and the whipped cream that's under it. Might as well use them all up. Waste not, want not, eh? Alright, so now we have the next and last step, which is ground cinnamon. And uh, my family likes a lot of cinnamon, so I'm going to go kind of heavy on it. And you want a good coverage everywhere. And that is our ECMEC. So with a uh, little, uh, either a wet paper towel or uh, just run it along the edge to clean it up. Pick up any cinnamon and straighten nuts. And there we are. So this can now go into the refrigerator. Uh, all right, now that we're, uh, we have our cinnamon and our whipped cream and our almonds on top of our ECMEC and I've cleaned up the edges as uh, well as I want to, um, this is gonna go and sit in the, normally would go and sit in the refrigerator 
until ready to serve. Um, it uh, is good for at least a week if it's covered well. Um, I have a dome lid that uh, fits onto my pan, uh, so it just clips on and it's uh, easy, uh, has the handle and everything, so it's easy to store. Uh, I'm going to cut a piece out for you. Normally I would let this chill, so hopefully this will come out okay. You don't need a knife or anything. Now the first piece of course is always the hardest. Let's see how I did. Alright, well, there's, let's do it this way. There's our egg mix. So we have our cake on the bottom. Nice and moist from the syrup. We have our custard cream and we have our whipped cream on top. Now, like I said, when it's chilled, that'll uh, be a much nicer uh, slice and it was also the first slice, so not too bad. So I'm gonna have a nice taste here. It's still a little soft because it's not chill chilled. Mm -hmm. This is one of my favorite desserts. It's cold. It's um, not too sweet actually, it's um, a medium sweetness. It's moist of course. The, um, you've got a bit of texture from the nuts on top. You've got the lovely taste of cinnamon mixed with the uh, vanilla, which are a great combination. Um, it's an all-round awesome dessert. So I hope you try it. Uh, I, hope, I know your family will love it. Um, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, share with your friends if you think they would enjoy this recipe. And uh, I hope to see you next time. Take care and goodbye.